Hello Dudpave Chong, welcome back to the Accounting Heist Lecture Series. In this video, we're going to practice the rules of debits and credits by recording transactions in the general journal. In our second episode, we discussed the journalizing process and the rules of debits and credits. By the way, if you haven't seen our previous episodes, we put the link to those videos in the description below. Going back, I believe that before proceeding with the next steps in the accounting cycle, you've got to have a strong foundation of the journalizing process and the application of the rules of debits and credits. So without further ado, my name is Ron, Certified Public Accountant, and I welcome you to the Accounting Heist Episode 4. In this video, I want you to play the role of the accountant for Brainwash Laundromat. Kung maaalala mo, no, si Brainwash Laundromat ang consistently kong ginagamit throughout my videos. Now, here are some simple steps that I suggest you follow para ma-maximize mo ang training video na to. Step 1. Go to the description box and may makikita ka dyang link to Chart of Accounts, which will serve as your reference. So remember, a Chart of Accounts is simply a listing of the accounts of an entity, right? Step 2. I'm going to flash the description of the transaction on the screen, which will hold on for a few seconds. And your role is to prepare journal entries for each transaction. Ngayon, kung kailangan mo ng time para mag-isip kung anong account ang gagamitin, kung ano ang ilalagay mo sa debit at credit, you can pause the video to buy yourself some time, alright? Step 3. After showing the description of the transaction, I'm going to show you my entry. So, syempre, dapat pareho tayo ng sagot. If ever naman hindi, I'm going to explain kung bakit ganun ang tamang sagot. Alright? Are you ready, Dut Parichong? Let's do it! First of all, I would like to show you the chart of accounts that we're going to use just in case hindi mo kinlik yung link sa description. As you can see, the accounts follow a certain numerical coding scheme. Assets begin with 1, liabilities begin with 2, and equity begins with 3. Now, bakit walang income statement accounts? Wala lang, hindi na kasha yun. Nasa next page pa. Now, eto naman ang income statement accounts. Of course, the coding is still present. Income accounts begin with 4 while expense accounts begin with 5. Importante na kapag nag entry tayo, we use the exact account title. Bawal ang wrong spelling ha, dud pare chong. It can create a significant error lalo na in accounting systems na automated ang setup. On June 1, ala jowa, hindi ikaw to dud pare chong ha. Ito yung pangalan ng business owner. In this case, your employer. Siya daw ay nag-invest ng 200,000 pesos to open Brainwash Laundromat. Now, let's do the entry. First, since the transaction date is already given, let's plot June 1 under the date column. Next, we received cash and therefore cash should increase, right? So, paano nga natin mapapataas ang assets? By debiting the account. So, we debit cash. Kaya ano ang kapartner na credit? This is an investment by the owner, so the owner's equity account should increase, right? Ngayon, tignan mo dyan sa chart of accounts kung ano ang tamang account title to use. Makikita mo dyan na ang capital account ay laundromat capital. Also, don't forget to put the explanation. This one does not have to be very specific. Basta ang mahalaga, clear ang description ng transaction. And then given naman ang amount, there's nothing to compute. So, let's put 200,000 pesos under the debit and credit columns. If pareho tayo ng sagot, Dud Pare Chong, lagyan mo ng check ng red na ball pen yung papel mo, alright? So, next, on June 3, part of startup of a business, of course, kailangan natin ng espasyo for the principal place of business. And common requirement ng mga nagpapaupa is to require advance rentals. So, in this case, we paid for 3 months in advance. Now, let's do the entry. Let's put the date first, so given naman siya, June 3. Remember, it's the beginning of the month and we're paying rent for 3 months. Meaning, the rent for the first month, which is the month of June, is not yet due. Therefore, it is not yet rent expense as of the recording date. Kaya naman, ang tamang debit dito ay prepaid rent. Prepaid meaning paid in advance. This is an asset, okay? Because you have the right to use the rented property for a duration and that is an economic benefit. Next, since we paid cash, of course, kailangan nating bawasan ng cash at paano nga ba natin yun gagawin? By a credit. Now, wag mong kakalimutang lagyan ng explanation. As I have mentioned earlier, hindi naman kailangan very specific. Mahalaga lang na iintindihan kung ano ang nangyari, ano ang nature of transaction. Now, for the amount, it's simply 9,000 per month for 3 months for a total of 27,000 pesos. Ngayon, ilagay mo lang dyan under the debit and credit columns. Alright? 
move on tayo to the next. On June 5, he issued a note for a 300,000 pesos bank loan which will be used for acquisition of laundry machine. Ibig sabihin tayo ang nag-issue, no? tayo ang umutang. The note bears 15% per annum or in simple word per year. The principal and interest are payable at the end of one year. Okay, let's do the entry. Unahin na natin, let's put the date. Then, we received cash as part of the loan. So, again, we need to increase cash and therefore debit cash no? para mag-increase. Next, nag-issue tayo ng note, a promissory note, which is an evidence of an obligation. No? So, although we actually loan from the bank, the credit will go to note payable instead of loan payable. Again, of course, don't forget to put the explanation. Lastly, since given naman yung amount, no, there's nothing to compute, let's put 300,000 pesos under the debit and credit columns. Kung tama ka, lagyan mo ng check ng red na ballpen. On June 7, hired two laundromat employees. Each will receive 450 pesos daily wage payable at the end of every 7 days. Okay, so paano naman ang entry natin dito? Siyempre, ilagay muna natin ang pecha para hindi natin makalimutan, alright? Diba? So siyempre, empleyado natin to. So meron kang debit to salary expense for their salaries, alright? Diba? Pero ang sabi, payable pa at the end of 7 days. That's why, salaries payable ang credit natin. Again, wag mong kakalimutan lagyan ng explanation, no? Now, magkano naman? Ang sabi, 450 pesos per day for 7 days times 2 dahil dalawa ang empleyado, no? For a total of 6,300 pesos. Now, ilagay natin ang amount sa debit and credit. Charot, ha? Walang entry dito, dude, pare chong. Bakit? Kasi nag-hire ka lang. Wala itong effect sa asset liability of equity natin. Wala ka pang expense dahil hindi pa naman sila nagtatrabaho. Hinire mo pa lang, okay? So kung nag-entry ka, lagyan mo ng X na malaki ng red na ballpen yung papel mo. On June 8, bought 8 automatic washing machine costing 15,000 pesos each. Paid 20,000 pesos cash, no? Ito yung down payment and the balance will be payable in 5 installments starting next month with 0% interest, no? 5 years useful life daw ang equipment with salvage value of 2,000 pesos each. Now, let's do the entry dude para chong. Siyempre, let's put June 8 under the date column as usual, no? Sabi, bumili tayo ng washing machine. So, in our chart of accounts, ang pinaka-appropriate to use ay laundromat machinery. So, let's debit laundromat machinery. Now, ang sabi, we paid for cash and the balance will be payable in installments. Ibig sabihin, we're going to have two credits for this one, dude, para chong. Ang tawag sa ganitong entry is a compound entry. A compound entry is an entry with more than one debit or more than one credit. Kapag one debit and one credit lang doon para chong, ang tawag doon is a simple entry, alright? So for the cash payment, no, of course, we have to credit cash. For the installment, we can use accounts payable. The other details given, wag mo nang masyadong pansinin because we don't need them for this entry, no? Nagagawin natin, alright? So ignore mo lang. Now, let's put the explanation. Lastly, each machine cost 15,000, no? So times 8 units. The total cost of the machineries is 120,000 pesos. So ilagay natin sa debit 120,000. Then, the down payment of 20,000 for the credit to cash. Ibawas mo lang yung down payment to get the balance of the accounts payable na installment, alright? So tama ka ba yan, dude, Barry Chong? Kung tama ka, very good, no? Lagyan mo ng check ng red na ballpen. Alright, ngayon naman, on June 9, Acquired laundry service vehicle amounting to 80,000 pesos. Now, this one to the chong is pretty straightforward, no? Okay, let's do the entry. Let's put the date as usual. Then, we debit service vehicle. Since we paid cash, of course, we credit cash. Again, the explanation to the entry to the chong magmong kakalimutan. Lastly, there's no need to compute for anything. So, let's just put the given cost, which is 80,000 under the debit and credit columns. Dapat tama ka na dito kapatid ha? It's very straightforward. Alright, move on na tayo sa susunod. Also on June 9, Brainwash Laundromat paid Ultra Safe Motor V Insurance Incorporated. Ang haba, dude pare, chong, no? gigil na gigil sa pangalan ng kumpanya <laughs> ng 8,000 for a 1-year comprehensive insurance coverage for the service vehicle na binili din natin ng the same day. Now, let's do the entry. First, let's put June 9 under the date column as usual. Dahil the insurance is for 1 year, ibig sabihin nito, 
hindi pa to expense dahil makukonsume mo ang insurance as the one year period lapses. Alright, gets ba yun? So, this is an asset as of June 9. So, let's debit prepaid insurance because this is insurance that you paid for in advance. Okay? That's the keyword. Paid in advance. Since we paid cash, let's credit cash. Again, don't forget to put the explanation to record insurance prepayment. Now, let's put the amount na given naman, no? There is no need to compute for anything. Worth 8,000 under debit and credit columns. So, tama ka ba dun, pare chong? Alright, let's move to the next one. On June 10, Brainwash Laundromat purchased supplies amounting to 7,000 pesos on account, meaning utang dun, pare chong, ha? With the terms 215 and 30. So, baka ngayon mo lang na-encounter tong 215 and 30 na to, dun, pare chong. Ang tawag dyan, discount and payment terms. Ang ibig sabihin nito, you will get 2% discount if you paid within 15 days. But the whole price is payable within 30 days. In such case, syempre, wala nang discount. In this case, ang 15 days ay tinatawag na discount period while the 30 days is the payment period. Meron ka pang ibang terms na may encounter dun para chong like N30, N45, 515, N30, etc. This is just an example. So for now, the entry. Let's put the date, June 10. Since naka-receive tayo ng supplies, we debit supplies. At dahil utang ito, we credit accounts payable. Pretty straightforward. Don't forget to put the explanation to the entry. Again, given ng amount, so let's put 7,000 under the debit and credit columns. Again, if tama ka, dod pare chong, lagyan mo ng check ng red na ball pen. Ngayon naman, on June 17, the laundromat started its operation. The employees started work immediately, dod pare chong, ha? Ibig sabihin, nagpaskil ka na, we're now open. Okay, now, let's do the entry. Again, let's put the date, June 17. So, anong i-debit natin? Tignan mo sa chart of accounts, dun para chong. Okay, wala. Ha? Okay. Kagaya ng sinabi ko kanina, walang effect sa assets, liabilities, and owner's equity. Hence, there's no need to make an entry. Charot ulit ito, ha? Okay? So, move on tayo, dun para chong. On June 20, accounts payable for the purchase made on June 10 was fully settled. Ito na yung payment natin, dod pare chong, para dun sa inutang natin kanina na supplies worth 7,000 with the terms 215 and 30. Okay, now, for the entry, medyo magko-compute tayo dito, dod pare chong. Kanina, sa nauna nating entry for the purchase, we credited accounts payable. At dahil magbabayad na tayo ngayon, we will debit accounts payable for the same amount that we credited before para mag-zero out siya. So, debit accounts payable. Next, ang sabi natin, if you paid within 15 days, you will get 2% discount. At dahil June 20 ngayon, June 10 noong bumili tayo, pasok pa tayo sa 15 days discount period. In higher accounting subjects, normally this would be recorded using a purchase discount account. But to make things simple, since we recorded the purchase earlier under supply, so this time, let's also credit supplies. Since the discount in effect reduces the historical cost of the supplies. And of course, the remaining credit would have to go to cash. So dahil magabayad tayo in full, we will debit accounts payable for the full amount of 7,000 para ma zero out, no? Then, let's compute for the discount. It's simply 7,000 times the discount rate of 2% or 140 pesos. Therefore, we will pay in cash, no, yung difference lang, 6,860 pesos net of discount. If tama ka dito, lagyan mo ng check ng red na ball pen, alright? Ngayon naman, dud pare chong, June 23 na, no? Halos isang buwan na lumipas. Laundromat revenue collections were summed up for the first week of operations. Ibig sabihin dun pare chong, sinamarize na yung listahan natin ng palondri, no? So, nakita natin, that is 15 customers per day, no? 180 pesos per laundry service for 7 days or 1 week of operations. Now, let's do the entry. So, as usual, unahin natin yung date dun pare chong. Ang sabi, cash revenue collection. So, obviously, we will debit cash, ha? At dahil revenue ito, tignan mo ngayon sa chart of accounts if anong appropriate account ang pwede natin gamitin. Siyempre, makikita mo dyan, merong loan drama revenues. Then, don't forget the explanation. Now, let's compute. That's 180 pesos per customers and there are 15 customers each day for 7 days, no? So, ang total natin yan, that's 18,900 pesos. 
So now, ilagay natin sa debit and credit columns, 18,900 pesos. Okay? Tama ka ba dito? Okay, move on na tayo sa susunod. Also on June 23, wages for the employees were paid dude, Papi Chong, no? So magpapasahod na tayo, kapatid. Ngayon lang, June 23, dahil kung naalala mo, nag-start tayo ng operations, June 17 lang, okay? Okay, so now, let's put the date, June 23. At dahil nagtatrabaho na sila para sa atin, it's already salaries expense, no? Incurred na dahil na-provide na nila yung servisyo sa atin, no? So, salaries expense to debit. At dahil magpapaswell na tayo, we will pay in cash. So, credit cash. So, ilagay natin sa explanation to record payment of employee salaries. Now, let's compute kung magkano. That's 450 pesos for 7 days for each employee, no? So, dalawa sila for a total of 6,300 pesos. So, last, ilagay natin ang amount na 6,300 under both debit and credit columns, okay? I hope tama ka dito, kapatid, no? So, next one. On June 25, Brainwash Laundromat received cash amounting to 2,300 pesos from Del Elegante Inn, a nearby establishment as part of a commitment to provide laundry services. Entrada tayo ngayon, Don Pare Chong. Ilagay natin ang pecha June 25, alright? So, analyzing the transaction, Don Pare Chong, we received cash. So, definitely, dapat may entry tayo for this one. However, we have not yet provided service to the Elegante Inn. Ibig sabihin, Don Pare Chong, meron siyang advance payment sa atin. So, we are obligated to perform services for Elegante Inn in return for the cash collection. Ibig sabihin, Don Pare Chong, in this transaction, our liability increased, no? So, for the debit, we received cash. So, malamang, we debit cash. While for the credit, we will credit unearned revenues. Ang account na to, ginagamit para sa mga advance collection for services that are yet to be rendered in the future. Ibig sabihin, kapag nag-render na tayo ng service to Del Elegante, Don Pare Chong, we will debit the unearned revenue account and recognize it as a credit to laundromat revenue. Ito yung tinatawag natin na Revenue Recognition Principle, Dude Pare Chong, no? Na mas i-discuss natin in another video, okay? Now, let's put in explanation, no? To record advance collection from customer. Lastly, let's put the amounts. 2,300 under debit and credit columns, no? Given naman na. So, next one. On June 27, Dude Pare Chong, may nagpalondri na special customer. Ha? Sino to? Ito yung crush ng boss mo noong grade 1 pa siya. Alright? At dahil nasa laundromat ka nung araw na yon, narinig mo ang usapan nila ng boss mo. Wow! Big time ka na ngayon ha? Negosyante ka na. Parang gumagwapo ngayon yung sabi ng special customer, no? Baka naman pwedeng pa laundry. Bayaran ko sa July 5. Ayun! No? Uutang pala, dud pare chong, no? At dahil gusto siyang makita ulit ng boss mo, bumayag siya, no? Sabi niya, Sige, kunin ko na lang yung number mo. Text kita pag ready na. Alright! Alright! No? In effect, nagpa-laundry, no? Utang, ha? Dude, Pare Chong. For an amount worth 1,800 pesos. Okay, so sa entry, simple lang to, Dude, Pare Chong. Ilagay lang natin ang date, which is June 27. Then, we debit accounts receivable dahil nga, ito ay utang, no? At credit to loan dramat revenue. Dahil nag-render na tayo ng service. Kung mapapansin mo, kanina naka-receive tayo ng cash, pero hindi natin na-record sa revenue. Pero ngayon, inutangan na tayo, wala tayong na-receive na cash, pero ni-record natin as revenue. Ito yung tinatawag natin na accrual basis of accounting, Dude Pare Chong. Ibig sabihin, the recognition of revenue is based on the provision of service of sale of goods. Ibig sabihin, the recognition of revenue is based on the provision of service or sale of goods, not based on the cash collection. Mas i-discuss natin to in a separate video. So I suggest you click the subscribe button para lagi kang updated pag may bago akong video, alright? Now, let's put the explanation. And dahil given naman ang amount, ilagay lang natin under debit and credit columns. So next. Ngayon, June 30 na, dude, pare chong, no? So same transaction as before, wages for the employees were paid, no? Pareho lang to doon sa transaction kanina. Dahil ang sabi nga, wage will be paid every 7 days no so let's do the entry no so same lang to kanina except for the date obviously so let's move on move on tayo agad dude pare chong dahil kung hindi ka mag move on agad baka makita mo siya may kasama na iba habang ikaw nasasaktan pa rin
Okay, so last one, Lord Papa Chong, no? On July 5, natanggap nyo ang electric and water bills for the period June 5 to July 4. Pay attention sa petsa, Lord Papa Chong, ha? At binayaran din naman on the same date. Meaning, binayaran to July 5, no? Okay. This one is tricky, so be careful. Okay, I'm going to show you my entry. So, unahin na natin ang petsa. June 30. Bakit? Because although we received the bill on July 5, We're going to record the expense for the month of June only. Ito ang tinatawag na expense recognition principle at matching principle. Mas i-discuss ko to in a separate video. Pero basically, ang ibig sabihin lang nito, dapat ang expenses sa isang accounting period, in this case the month of June, ay kompleto at recorded under the month in which it is incurred to produce revenue. Dahil kung hindi natin ito gagawin, madidistort ang measurement natin ng performance. Or in other words, profit or loss, Lord Papa Chong. Ibig sabihin, we should recognize the utilities expense incurred for the month of June that is 26 out of 30 days ng total bill na natanggap natin pero i-recognize din natin yung remaining 4 days for the month of July. So, ibig sabihin, i-pro-provate mo siya. Now, let's put utilities expense as our debit at dahil hindi pa tayo magbabayad by the time ng June 30, utilities payable pa lamang to, Lord Papa Chong. Dahil obviously na-receive natin ang bill July 5 pa lang, we are merely recording this for June 30 to recognize the expense for such month. Again, don't forget the explanation, Lord Parachong. Now, let's compute for the amount. Yung total na 2,300 pesos, it pertains for the period June 5 to July 4. However, dapat ang i-record lang natin for the month of June ay from June 5 to June 30. That is 26 out of 30 days. Hence, we will provide the total bill to the parachong. Thus, 26 divided by 30 times 2,300 pesos. Ngayon, ilagay na natin ang sagot under the debit and credit columns na 1,933.33 pesos. So, if tama ka dito, Lord Parachong, palakpakan mo ang sarili mo dahil medyo mahirap-hirap to. And that's it for this video, Lord Parachong. Don't forget to hit the like button, share this video to your friends, and hit the subscribe button para lagi kang updated in our weekly content. Also, if you have questions or may mga bagay kang hindi naintindihan, feel free to comment down below and we'll respond to you as soon as we can. By the way, don't go yet, Lord Parachong, since we're giving away a free accounting book of your choice. All you have to do is check the mechanics which we put in the description below and make sure to follow all those steps to earn the chance for a free accounting book of your choice. See you next time!